everyone to the hello world guy and in this video we are going to well get started with our new series so we finished the 3d platformer game series in the last video so in this video we are going to start our new series and this is actually going to be a 2d game and in this game what we are going to do is create a kind of uh, uh, you know uh, a puzzle kind of game which uh, tests your memory so in a way that you have got like a grid of cards and each card has got something different on it and you have to match the cards that are kind of alike so yeah that will be a really nice way for us to you know kind of learn how to make uh, this kind of a game because uh, I have never made puzzle games before on this channel so this is going to be something new so yeah let's uh, let's try that uh, and uh, in here you can see we have got our uh, I have creating a new project using unity uh, version is the 22.1.6 uh, you can use whatever version you want it shouldn't be that much of a problem uh, I'm going to select the 2d template and for the project name you can just put whatever you want I'm going to just put here memory puzzle uh, yeah like that and just choose whatever location you want in here uh, you can choose whatever you want and once you are done that just hit create project so once the unity project has loaded up all you need to do is uh, well set it up according to our game right now we are going to do the main setup of the game in this video so first of all I'm going to go under my main camera and select that and you can see that its uh, uh, background is set to bluish I'm going to change that to a pure gray much like uh, uh, this here because that seems pretty nice to me and once I do that, this looks like this, which is pretty awesome. Uh, if I turn off the grid, you can see that this is the exact same color. Uh, in fact, it's the exact same color now. It's uh, like no difference between these two windows more, most of the time. Because uh, the color is exactly the same. And we turn the gizmos and the grid back on. And what we need to do now is we need to have a play area for our game. So I'm going to right click and create a, a 2D object, a sprite square called um, background. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set its size to four, but uh, to seven, seven uh, or ten actually, uh, ten by ten. Okay, ten by ten is not an option. Uh, eight by eight seems pretty awesome. Uh, doesn't seem like it's going to cause that much of a problem here. But yeah, it's uh, always in the view no matter how much I scale. So yeah, we, we of course want this to be always in the view, it will work on 16 to 9 aspect and it will also work on 16 to 10 aspect and full HD, everything it will just work. So you can see that this is not causing any problems at all. So now that this is being displayed properly, all we need to do is uh, we need to well change it so that uh, you know uh, we can actually uh, add the things in here. So first of all I'm going to change this color to something like uh, uh, bluish, uh, you know, not bluish, kind of between green and blue here. That seems uh, pretty awesome. You might actually want to have just a gray dark color here. I actually think that that would be nice to have a light gray color uh, because we are all going to just create colors for our game right now. We will add sprites and cool animations and stuff later. Uh, now, what I want for this video is I want to have a 3x3 three three or 3x4 three or whatever. I want a kind of grid here. Now I could go ahead and add a 2D objects here automatically and add uh, like small uh, elements in here but that won't be too nice I guess because uh, you know that would be kind of manual and repetitive and uh, uh, well while it would work it will uh, limit us because we will have to you know manually change a bunch of stuff uh, for the for these later so what I would for the tiles later so what I would want in this video is I want to have a uh, I, I want to have a system that allows us to generate all of the tiles so that we can generate their properties as well in the future videos. So I'm going to create a new feature, uh, not really, uh, I've got my prefab folder here. I'm going to right click and create a new prefab here, if it actually compiles. Uh, it's taking a little bit of time to compile. Uh, and if I create a new prefab here, I'm going to, uh, well before we actually do that, let me just uh, go in here and uh, let me select this. And if I actually add in a 2D square here called the uh, uh, right, uh, actually uh, it, we don't need to make it a child of the background. Uh, let's don't, let don't make it a child, one, and make sure it's one on the D as well. Uh, anyways, you can see that this is what it looks like. I'm going to change this to the tile. And if I move this uh, on the X back to like negative four, uh, four, then you can see it's here, but if I change it to negative three, then it's kind of here. 
uh, and if I move that y to negative 3 as well then it's here and if I move that to positive 3 it's at the top left corner and if I duplicate that a couple of times and I move each of them by like 3 units then it forms a 3 by 3 grid uh, which is not uh, exactly nice so if I move it by uh, 1.5 units then it uh, forms a larger grid which will be better but uh, I want a smaller grid actually uh, with an increased tile size so I'm going to increase the size of this tile to be 2 by 2 and uh, make the position minus negative 2 instead uh, on both axes uh, uh, like that uh, actually 2 is a bit too much I guess uh, well we can we can adjust these uh, but if you want you can make this like negative 1.5 and then uh, this as uh, 0 and then you can have uh, well you can actually just duplicate it another time make it 1.5 uh, I'm just doing a de demonstration we will of course generate these later uh, so make this 3 alright you can see that this uh, basically allows us to have a uh, you know a, mm, a a 5 by 5 grid actually for our current background size which is pretty awesome so now we want a 5 by 5 grid and you can see that each of these tiles is being spaced by exactly 1.5 units starting at negative 3 so we can pass that data to our generator script in order to allow it to generate stuff so I'm going to make a prefab out of this tile here and I'm going to delete uh, all of the things that we have got in our scene and just like that let's uh, go under and um, go under my uh, uh, in, well actually we have to create the scripts folder here uh, to create a script folder here uh, right click add in a new C sharp script called style generator and yeah we can need to now edit the script and make it do whatever you know actually generate the tile now one question that arises is uh, where should we place this script well I'm just going to place it on the camera we would place, place it on the background but that would cause the thing to be a child of the background and we don't exactly want that so I'm just going to put it on the camera because the camera will be acting as a player in this game so I'm going to open up the tile generator script now and just wait for it to open up in VS code I'm going to maximize the window here and let me just close this and in here we are going to add all of the functionality that we need now I'm going to remove the update method here and the start method and I'm going to go ahead and add in a CDLI field here which is going to be a private followed uh, well let me just remove these two as well uh, called uh, you know tile spacing which by default let us make it 1.5 that we just calculated uh, we did a kind of eject whatever what we want it to be and if we make it that then we would like to you know start at negative 3 and then uh, uh, keep adding 1.5 so how do we know that we start at negative 3 well for this uh, we are going to um, uh, first of all let me just have a uh, private int here called tile uh, called uh, number uh, of tile and uh, this is going to be by default 5 and that would allow our tiles to be you know because that's the default value that we want you can of course change these in the inspector if you were to change your prefabs or anything of that sort you can have a 3x3 three three grid if you want totally up to you now I have added two more CLI fields here a start value which will represent the value at which you will actually start and I have added a game object for the actual tile reference that we need to spawn so in order to start I'm going to have a float for x and the y I'm going to have a for loop here uh, okay uh, I have for loop here uh, int i is equal uh, to 0 and let's just say um, or right, let's just call it uh, i I guess uh, and for the length I'm mean, instead of saying the length I'm just going to say uh, i is less than uh, you know the number of tiles so we are going for i less than number of tiles and we are setting both of these equal to the tile uh, equal to the you know, start value uh, both x and the y now both x and y are equal to the start value which means negative and we are going to give what i is less than number of tiles and in here we are going to have of course this is currently you know, i just realized it's kind of problematic we do not want to have the x in here we want the x uh, in here all right uh, with that done mm, we are going to have another for loop here uh, this is going to be i'm just going to call this j uh, j is less than the number of tiles of course because our we are assuming that the uh, background will always be perfectly square uh, you could you know change or add a couple of extra variables if you want to allow rectangular background but we are not going to do that 
so uh, we are going to have two loops one loops over uh, the this and uh, for each of these iterations what we do is for the y we say y plus equal the tile spacing and we do the same for the x in the other loop uh, tile spacing so now we need to actually instantiate the game object here all right so the next thing that we are going to do in here is uh, now uh, all we need to do is a single line of code say instantiate and we can instead for the original object just pass the tile object that we have got in here and for the position i'm going to just say a new vector 3 uh, and this is going to just have the x and y value and for the rotation just say quaternion dot identity which it means no rotation at all now uh, this actually is going to work perfectly because we have got everything working uh, and uh, let's just uh, go on unity let it compile and uh, while it's compiling let's just uh, uh, well, wait and let's hit play now and what you should see is that immediately uh, pro provided that uh, you have set up everything correctly okay 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 uh, number of tiles is supposed to be five here so just go ahead and add that script to the main camera and make sure that all of the values here are set correctly including that tile uh, asset uh, the prefab is assigned and once you make sure that that is uh, everything is working just hit play and what you should see is a perfect grid of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 by 5 grid. Now, I just realized a small problem with this because we are going to be working in pairs. A 5 by 5 grid is going to have odd number tiles, 25 total tiles, and won't exactly work. So, it would be better if we had a 4 by 4, a 6 by 6 grid. So, we are going to change this to, if I, uh, if we can change this to uh, a 4 by 4 grid by just changing the tile spacing to something like 2 and changing the number of tiles to 4. I'm also going to select my tile asset and increase its size to 1.5 by 1.5 so that it actually fits uh, with 4 by 4. And now if I hit play, you can see that we didn't have to make a single change in code, but we do have a working 4 by 4 tile as well. Alright, so this is the final thing that we are going to use. So in the next video, we will add the uh, uh, option for, you know, having these change colors and clicking the, the, them and uh, finding what they are. So yeah, this is going to be really interesting. So stay tuned for that. And I will see you in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Check out my other devlog channel as well. And bye.